In this video, I'm going to show you my partner and I's first effort to solidify helium, and given time constraints, sadly our last, at least for the semester. We may get a chance later on to try again, but not during this semester. The effort didn't succeed, unfortunately, because unexpected problems with the electrical system, and as we later found out, the pressure system as well, stopped it from being able to work. But all the preparations and the theory and the troubleshooting that was successful before we even attempted that made it seem like we really had a chance is extremely interesting. The tests just before it suggested everything was working. It seems that problems occurred actually during the cool down and we don't know what they are and we looked for anything obvious there was nothing so whatever the problems are they're subtle enough that it would take quite a while to find them we are going to do another liquid helium experiment another more rigorous first sound exploration of liquid helium around the lambda point but our solid helium work is going to have to stop here after just the first attempt However, it's really hard to call it a true failure because the process of preparing for a realistic attempt at solidifying helium and then attempting to execute it and finding a problem in the middle of it all is so science intensive that it's impossible not to learn a whole bunch. There are really two sections to this video. Footage from the preparation for the run, which I took over weeks before the actual run, and then video clips from the run itself. I was really only able to take some random video clips from the preparation. It covers most of the general idea of what was done, but it doesn't really cover it continuously enough for them to tell a story as coherently as I'd prefer. So I'll just tell you now the general idea of what's going on. So when the clips start, it's just after the first run we ever did at low temperature at all, a liquid helium run. And we use the same resonator in that liquid run as what we used in the solid run, but a different cryostat. So the first step was to take it off the old cryostat and put it on the new one. Then other clips will show the preparation of the cryostat that we were going to use for the solid. It wasn't ready to go, so there are some clips showing a little bit of the preparation of that cryostat before we put the resonator on and then with the resonator on it. So that's about what all the clips from the preparation consist of. After that, in the second section, the one on the actual run itself, I did a lot more filming, so you get perhaps a more easy to follow story from that. I hope you enjoy watching it. The stainless steel high pressure cell for the solid helium experiments was returned by the shop that made it. We sent them a chunk of metal and a CAD drawing and they returned this. It looks great. It looks like it's going to do exactly what we need to. This is the cryostatin resonator we used for the liquid helium experiments. I'm going to take the resonator off because we're going to use that one for solid helium experiments but on a different cryostat. One that can hold that high pressure cell I just showed you. So I've got it unbolted now. I just need to take those electrical leads off. So this is the resonator that was mounted on the cryostat we're going to be using for the solid helium experiments. This is the resonator that we're going to use, the one that was on a liquid cryostat because we just did a liquid experiment. And you can see I've already switched the mounting plates. This is the lid to the cell that I was talking about. These are the three coax cable inputs and these are the two capillary inputs. And we can see on the inside here, you've got the three coax inputs. Then you may be able to see a hole there and there. Those are the capillary inputs. That's where the helium will actually enter. So this is the lid to this cell there. And via these holes, it needs to be mounted onto that. Excitingly, new progress has been made on all facets of the solid helium portion of our project and I'm going to show you the cryostat here first. Previously there was nothing on this plate but now there are these poles here and this cap is fastened to them and you can see inside there that silver lead right there that is the capillary tube that's been re-soldered back on that's the one we're going to use and then this capillary tube is sealed off the one just above it. We've already seen the pressure cell itself this will be mounted on there using an indium gasket and screwed down of course, we'll put our resonator in first, and we've got that mounting plate mounted on it, and that allows it to be screwed onto the lid there, and then this thing will go over that once it's mounted. And of course, this connector there with, for one of the transducers, and that one there will be connected to 
uh, two of the center wires you see coming through for the coaxes. Then we can come over to the top of the cryostat here and we see that there are coax connections that will allow us to drive and detect with the transducers. And we've got these two capillary lines, one of which connects to the one you saw soldered. And that one is the one that we'll use to get the helium into the cell. Now there are two roles helium's playing here. There will be helium in this doer here that will be vacuumed down to cool it evaporatively. That helium has nothing to do with the solidification itself in that it's not being solidified. That helium bath is just there to achieve the low temperature. And the helium that comes in through those capillary tubes is the helium that will actually go in here which will be sealed off from the bath. And the helium that goes in there will condense because of the low temperature of the bath to a liquid and then it'll fill it up and we'll keep filling it even after it's full and the reason why is because we want to build up the pressure to solidify it. The pressure system that we're going to use to actually fill this up is this here. Basically here's how it works. We've got this cylinder here that'll provide the pressure and we've got a high pressure regulator there and a stop valve and then this copper pipe goes around and up and connects to a T fitting on the back and then that T fitting connects to this cold trap and through the cold trap it connects to this ballast tank here and this high pressure gauge and it also connects through the same T fitting to that tube there which will connect to the cryostat that I just showed you not the one that's in there for our actual experiment. Now the point of the ballast tank is just to increase the volume of the system so that the pressure doesn't fluctuate wildly as a result of any tiny leaks or anything. So basically the idea is this. You already saw the stop valve on the cryostat. We'll close that and we'll put helium into here and it'll go through the cold trap to do that. So most of it will be purified. Now then we'll close off the stop valve here and we'll open up the one slowly on the cryostat and that will let helium back through the cold trap and into the capillary tube and down into the pressure cell. Here is the back of the pressure system. So we have the cylinder there with the high pressure regulator. We have that T-fitting that you couldn't see. And we have the connections to the cold trap that you couldn't see. That's the ballast tank. And then that tube goes over there and will connect to the cryostat once we have it in place. If you're having trouble understanding what I just explained from the actual equipment, you can see here. This is the tank. This will supply the helium and it'll go through to this tank here because the stop valve will be closed there. And then we can close that stop valve there. This is the one that actually turns the tank on. And then we can open this one and the buildup of gas here will flow back through the cold trap, be purified again and go down to there. So now you understand the pressure system. If you haven't watched my previous videos and you don't know how this thing works, you could watch those. We are testing the pressure system now. This is the first time it's ever been under any pressure. Opened up the stop valve more and now it's going up faster. It's only leaking extremely slowly even though we're at rather high pressure. It's holding it very, very well. And of course at lower pressure it'll leak even more slowly. So this is very good news. The resonator is all hooked up now. We're ready to do an air resonance bench test to make sure all the electricals are working. So we are now conducting an in-air at room temperature resonator bench test. This is the bench test results that we got. They're not as nice as we'd hoped but they're definitely usable. We've got some resonances that we can make sense out of. So we'll at least be able to do the experiment and get results. I just put the indium gasket in the lip of the pressure canister and I've begun putting the screws in to clamp it down. I'm putting them in reasonably loosely. I've got 12 to put in. Once I've got them all in, I'll start really tightening them down to compress the seal. So we've just done another resonance test after fastening the pressure cell on and we got the same results so we haven't messed anything up by putting that on so we'll go for the next step we have connected the cryostat to the pressure system for the first time and because we've got the cell on and those screws tightened down at the indium gasket we are ready to pressure test this we're a little nervous so we have just successfully pressure tested the system it's taking up to 500 psi we can see there's a compression fitting right here, and when we first tested it, it was quite loose and we didn't know it, so we actually blew the compression fitting at about 300 psi, and it was really loud, like left our ears ringing and absolutely frightened us. But once we realized how loose the compression fitting was, we just tightened it up nicely and got it as tight as we could, and it's absolutely taking the pressure now. 
The indium gasket is absolutely holding the pressure, as is the capillary. The entire cryostat's performing really well. We used Snoop to test for leaks, and we found none, even on the compression fitting that we blew that first test. So it's all working quite well. We're going to replace all the gas in the pressure system with helium. So we're going to vacuum it out and back purge it with helium a few times, and then we'll begin to cool down, and then that's about all we'll do tonight. We've already vacuumed out the inner doer jacket and filled it with a low pressure of nitrogen, so that's done. Okay, so we have the cryostat in the doer, and we have it again connected up to the high pressure system, and we're in the process of replacing all the air in the pressure system with helium, and we're going to replace all the air in the inner doer with nitrogen, and then put the liquid nitrogen in to begin the cool down, and we'll be done for tonight. And we'll come back tomorrow for the actual test. Okay, so we have now vacuumed out the inner doer and backfilled it with nitrogen, which means we've got both the inner doer jacket and the inner doer appropriately filled with nitrogen, so we're ready to put the liquid nitrogen in the outer doer to begin the overnight cool down to 77 Kelvin. And then, of course, tomorrow morning when we get here, we will backfill the inner doer, which now has nitrogen in it, at about an atmosphere with helium gas. And then once the helium gas is in there, we can begin the transfer of liquid helium in there and ultimately get our experiment going. We're beginning to fill it with nitrogen. Okay, LN2 should come over and we should start seeing it. I hear it coming up the pipe. It's probably going to freeze up the pipe first. Okay, you can see the liquid nitrogen in there bubbling. There, it's filled some more. Such beautiful thing, really clear, watery, cryogenic liquid. I quite like it. By now the nitrogen transfer has really frozen things up. You can see all that fog coming off on the icy tube. Never really gets old for me. Ooh, we've got lots of nitrogen in there now. It's really boiling vigorously as it cools down the door. I find the bubbling so mesmerizing. I will be perpetually condemned to putting way too much liquid nitrogen and liquid helium footage in my videos because I just find the bubbling so mesmerizing as it fills. Oof. You can see the plumes of fog coming off of the vent there from the nitrogen filling. Woohoo! Look at that. Okay, we're all done filling that up so we can begin the cool down overnight. Unsurprisingly, last night during the cool down, there was a lot of boil off. So the first step when you get back in is to add more liquid nitrogen, which is exactly what we're doing right now. You can see it's splashing around a lot in there. So the cold trap we use to cool the helium gas that's gonna be solidified is now immersed in a flask of liquid nitrogen which we just filled up and the tube is still all rigid from being cold. Time to do the helium transfer now. Before we do the transfer we're getting a temperature measurement to make sure that it has actually cooled down the way we think it has overnight. So we've got those Wheatstone bridges there that we're balancing with a resistor that's in the doer that will hold the helium bath. So we have just purged the transfer tube in preparation for the helium transfer. Oh, yep, there's the helium filling. Oh, wow, it's freezing up. There's solid air forming. Look at that, all that white powder. That's surprising. That didn't happen last time. There we go. The liquid helium line. Oh, wow, that's filling fast. Okay, 
Okay, it just exceeded the nitrogen level. We suspect that cloud of air that crystallized out on the inner doer right at the level at the end of the transfer tube resulted from the transfer tube somehow not being purged completely, but that's the only part of the, our view that's obstructed by solid air. Okay, so we have begun pumping down the helium bath to get it to a sufficiently low temperature to start condensing helium. Once it's down a little ways, I'll start feeding helium into the system. I've started to pressurize the part of the system that does not include the cryostat. The stop valve of the cryostat is still closed. We'll wait until it's sufficiently cool to actually introduce helium there. As soon as I turned on helium gas, it flowed through the cold trap and it started boiling more vigorously. So it is actually working the way it's supposed to, which is very cool. That's the bubbling surface of the helium there. You're seeing in front of the copper cryostat stem. It's bubbling so much because the vacuum pump is pumping on it. Try to get it down to the lambda point to make it a superfluid. You have to boil off so much of it to get it there, sadly. As the temperature lowers, the bridge comes closer to being in balance because we've got it set to the resistance value that's required at the lambda point. So slowly, gradually, the, that waveform on the oscilloscope will shrink as it cools and goes in balance. Also, the lock-in amplifier will show that it is in perfect balance when that happens. It should cross the lambda point at around 38 torr for operating at saturated vapor pressure. Helium is still boiling down. Stopping boiling. Yeah, black Wow. But you can clearly see, while the surface of the fluid is shaking, it's not boiling at all. That is superfluid helium. Okay, very cool. We can start adding helium to the pressure cell and condense it down. Very cool. We're good to go. Okay, so that stop valve is open now. Helium is flowing into the cell and hopefully condensing down and forming a liquid and hopefully we'll be able to see resonances as soon as it's full of liquid. It should fill slowly because the capillary tube is so narrow. Ooh, there's a great crystal clear shot of the superfluid. It looks so weird. Now keep in mind this superfluid helium that you're seeing right now is not what we're going to solidify. That superfluid helium is just the helium bath, which keeps the part of the system cold where the helium will actually be solidified. The actual helium we are solidifying is in an opaque container, that steel pressure cell, so we won't be able to see it sadly. The dust that's fallen on that cryostat fin there, that's solid air. Really, really solidly frozen air. Looks like just dust, rock dust. Just put some more nitrogen in this cold trap doer, and we can see the tube's all frozen up. I'm gonna have to wait for it to unfreeze before I can actually take the tube out, otherwise it'll shatter. Well, it seems like there's a short in some of the detection equipment. We were getting resonances in air yesterday and we checked thoroughly and there was none, so exactly how this one suddenly showed up, we're not sure, but it does mean that we just can't do any measurements, so this first attempt at solidifying helium is just necessarily a failure. We're going to have to let it warm up and we're going to check for issues. If there's something super easy to fix and it suddenly works really well, then sure, we'll try again, but chances are we're running out of time and we may not be able to solidify helium. So to figure out what the electrical problem was, we did a fast warm-up where we took it out of the doer after bringing it to atmospheric pressure before all the liquid helium was gone and then put the cover on the doer. Then we put the cryostat in the bag to stop condensation and then we let it warm up for about an hour. Now the bag's off and it's almost warmed up. It's still frosty on the bottom, but it's not that much below the freezing temperature of water at this point. Then hopefully we'll be able to figure out what went wrong and fix it and maybe, maybe fast enough to get a second attempt at solid in. You can't see it now because I dried it off, but this connection there, that coax connection, is actually leaky. We warmed it up with a cup of water in order to get it to a state where we could take the can off sooner 
and when we did that, it started bubbling because gas inside was warming up and expanding that pressure, which is much smaller than the pressure we, we need to be able to put it under, it was enough to force gas out of that connection. And that's probably not something we can fix in time, so our solid efforts probably are over. I've taken the can off of the cryostat, and there's nothing obviously wrong. I'll have to go exploring. This cryostat is the bane of my existence. It just won't work right. Okay, so I opened it up, and there are no obvious problems, which means whatever the problem is, it would take long enough to find that we're not going to have time to do that. So, very sadly, after all this effort, we're going to have to just give up on the solid helium for this semester. We will still do a Monday-Tuesday run, but it will be on the other cryostat that works better with the same resonator, and it will just be studying the speed of first sound around a lambda point in superfluid helium and liquid helium above that. You have now seen the entirety of our attempt to solidify helium. This type of low temperature physics really interests me. I'm quite excited about it and I hope at some point in the future I get further chances to try and solidify helium using what I learned here in this first sadly failed attempt. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. D-trick out.